Hi, everybody, and welcome to Friday Night Flock Talk. I'm Robin Sullivan from the Leather Elves, and I'm here with Jack Pine from High Redbird. How you doing, Jack? I'm doing all right. How are you doing, Robin? I'm doing good. I'm excited because tonight we're going to talk about enrichment essentials and what you should have on hand to create that fun enrichment for your birds. Sounds like a wonderful topic. Of course, it, it's enrichment. Of course it is. So I bet we have some reminders, Jack. All right. So we do have reminders for everybody every single week. First and foremost, we want to remind you that we do these live stream sessions every single Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, so if you would like to watch them live, you can like the Leather Elves page on Facebook. That's where we do these live streams. Uh, you can participate in the conversation. Ask us any questions you may have. We cover a variety of topics, um, so there's always going to be something somewhere that is going to be useful for you guys. Um, and again, like the Leather Elves page on Facebook so you get notifications whenever we start a live stream. If you miss out one of the sessions, um, if you have something else going on or you just happen to forget, um, you can, of course, watch all of the recorded sessions on the High Redbird YouTube channel. So you can subscribe over there. All of our recorded sessions are put together as part of a playlist. Uh, we are at right around 40 hours of content so far. Um, so there's going to be all of the sessions that we put together, plus all of the videos that I put together, different toy tutorials and other things. Um, so there's a lot of enrichment that's available there as well. So you guys should definitely check that out. But um, not right now, because we're about to do a live stream where we talk to you guys about so many different fun things. Um, other things to add to your to-do list, uh, if you haven't already, you want to make sure that you follow both the Leather Elves and High Red Bird on Instagram. Um, again, we share with you guys a lot of different enrichment, a lot of fun animals, um, a lot of really cool things. And of course, we always let you know what our sessions are going to be on all of our social media. So the more you follow us, the more varied ways you follow us you're gonna ensure that you don't miss out on what those sessions are gonna be um, and you don't miss out on any really important information. And, you know, Robin and I have been doing for, God, I, I think we're at like eight months now of live streams. Um, we've been doing these virtual sessions with you guys where we all can come together. We can all talk about these variety of different topics, but Robin and I will be in person at the AFA conference. Uh, that's gonna be happening in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, so you guys can see both Robin and myself will be leading a session. We will be doing a workshop session together and we will have our first in-person live stream. So if you would like to be a part of our live streams and things like that, I mean, obviously you can continue to watch online. We definitely encourage you guys to do that. But we'd love to see you in person too in Minneapolis. Um, and that is going to be happening in about a week and a half. Um, but yes, Robin. It's Bloomington. Okay, so you Just can saying. be on Janice's team. I'll be on Karen's team because Karen doesn't <laughs> seem like she would fight fairly. So that seems like the person whose team I'd want to be on. Okay, so, so it is technically in Bloomington, Minneapolis, or Bloomington, Minnesota which is a suburb of Minneapolis. There you go. So I have another you reason why you should. Uh-oh. I have another reason why people should go to, to Minnesota. Why should they go? Are you ready? Because the gold medalist in women's gymnastics is from St. Paul, Minnesota. In case, I mean, if someone needed another reason, just saying. Nick just really wanted so, to be able to use that logo, didn't he? He did. He did. <laughs> I did Nick I works did hard like on these really the, cool graphics. We got to give Nick a chance to use them. He, he works really I, hard. So, you know. I really like humor the Olympic him. rings made out of, you know, your little fruit and nut foraging rings. Those are cool. Thank you very much. All right. So, um, before we get started tonight, we just have um, 
a serious topic that we need to talk about. I know a lot of you tune in every Friday night and one of the people that has helped us immensely um, ha- was Dr. Patricia Anderson. And we lost Pat this week. And there were so many times when Pat would fill in the blank for me, when I would struggle with words, when I would put things, you know, that were, uh, you know, I, I just say, well, blah, 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 and regular, you know, easy speak. And Patricia would explain it eloquently and in understandable terms that were far more technical um, than I would do. Patricia will be missed so much in the community and on the live stream as well. And I know Jack, um, you, you will feel, you feel the same way. So I, you know, yeah, I, I, I think one of the most important things to recognize with Patricia, the benefits she brought to Ava culture, um, Patricia like didn't have times where she was on or when she wasn't on, she was always willing to engage people with uh, how to understand their birds, how to uh, interact with their birds, how to foster that positive relationship. That was something she worked on tirelessly. um, And it is definitely something that I would encourage anyone. If you find yourself in that position, try to emulate that approach as best as possible because I really cannot deny that in losing Dr. Patricia Anderson, Ava Coulter really has lost a fierce advocate who, um, I mean, like you said, she had an eloquent way of breaking down complex behavioral topics in a way that was easily digestible and approachable. And, uh, you know, we, we are definitely going to miss her uh, as a community. Um, Robin and I are definitely going to miss her as part of our Friday night clock talk family as well. Um, Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just, and you know, and another thing about Patricia that makes me smile that I don't know if everyone knew about her. If you're friends with her on Facebook, you knew um, she was a big fan of cake and you gotta love a woman that loves cake. So I just, you know, she will be missed. And I think, like you said, Jack, she's someone that you want to try to be more like when you're thinking about how am I going to handle something? How am I going to, she, there was never anybody that was not worth talking to. It was, oh, you had, there were never any stupid questions. There was never any, you know, like, oh, not again. She, she was just a real true lady. So I want to, um, you know, send out there to her family. Um, we are so sorry for your loss. And again, for our flock talk family, it's a really big loss too. So, um, we will miss you. So Jack, we, we have one more announcement, I think, um, about the, the quilt raffle. Yes. Um, So we did want to let everyone know that the National Parrot Rescue and Preservation Foundation, uh, of which Robin and I are both board members, uh, is currently doing a raffle of this handmade, uh, painstakingly handmade, uh, hand-pieced quilt that uh, all raffle tickets sold will benefit the Georgia Fletcher Memorial Scholarship fund. Uh, That's a fund that was created by the Quaker Parakeet Society uh, to benefit vet students uh, in aviculture. So it's definitely a wonderful mission. It's definitely something that we wanted to encourage uh, anyone, if you have the opportunity to participate, um, you know, you can definitely purchase raffle tickets. Again, all of the money raised from those raffle tickets is going directly to that fund. Um, So you know that by purchasing a raffle ticket. One, you have the opportunity to potentially win what uh, I would say is a fairly nice quilt. Um, But every dollar that is spent that way is something that you are doing to benefit the future of Ava culture. Um, So we definitely wanted to let you guys know about that. 
And and I will say, I can tell you all that um, a lot of, so Jack used to have more hair before um, he started that quilt. And there, there was a lot of agonizing over colors and just, a, Jack's heart and soul went into that quilt. So it's it's well worth the raffle ticket purchase. Um, so, okay, we've we've gone on and, and done, um, we've had a lot of announcements and stuff tonight and, and some rough stuff to talk about. But tonight we're talking about a topic that is near and dear to my heart. <laughs> and then there's the keeping, me on, keeping me on track. Um, we need... The Christmas in July sale ends tomorrow. Um, I know a lot of you have taken advantage of that and I appreciate it. Um, the Leather Elves appreciate it. So if you want to get in on that, um, that Christmas in July sale where you buy one and we send you two, uh, it is over tomorrow at midnight. So let's, let's do that. Make more work for me, which is okay. I don't mind. And um, remember that e July 4th through January 1st, if you place an order with the Leather Elves over $50 after discounts and before shipping, you are entered into a drawing to win a year's worth of toys. So a toy a month for a year. Um, Connie Honeycutt was our winner last year. So um, it's it's pretty easy. Um, all you have to do is spend $50 and you get entered into that, that drawing. Okay. So I think, Nick, I think we're done now, right? I think. So we're going to talk about enrichment tonight. Yes, Julie, the BOGO is the same toy. You, If you buy one, we send you two. Um, that way there's no code involved. It just makes life easy. Um, so with enrichment, we need some definition. And Jack, do you have your smart glasses? I'm going to let Jack put on the smart glasses. Okay. Oh, look at that. I am, I'm impressed. So Jack, what is enrichment? I need to clean my glasses first. Um, unfortunately, oh with the ring light, uh, when I put on the glasses, <laughs> if there is a single smudge on them, I cannot see anything. There we go. There we go. Do, I, right. do I look like I know what I'm talking about now? You do. It this helps. Wait, and I have to hold them like this, right? And then like do, do this one too. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll work all that in there. So what is enrichment? Uh, behavioral enrichment is an animal husbandry principle that seeks to enhance the quality of captive animal care by identifying and providing the environmental stimuli necessary for optimal psychological and physiological well-being. Wow, that's that that was impressive. You you needed the smart glasses for that. Um, so. Let's make it see that that was a Patricia kind of definition. It really was. And then I would go, yes, yeah, so it's just stuff that makes life better for our birds. Right? Honestly, um, that is basically what it boils down to. Um, I would say it is I, things that make life better, giving you mental choice, physical exercise, you know, variety. I think it's, it's about enhancing the quality of life. And I, you hit upon one thing, Jack, that, you know, we, we hadn't really discussed discussing tonight, but I think choice is critical. So if you're offering choice, then you're doing your job. You, you know, it's, it's not about, I put this in and this is the toy that you're going to get. And it, that's going to stay there because I bought it. You need to offer that choice. You need to, to allow your birds or your animals to make choices for themselves. I think that's really, really um, important. Right, and I, th I think with en enrichment, it's really important to recognize that you are not trying to replicate the ridiculous number of choices that your animal would have in the wild. Um, there's not gonna be any real way to do that, um, but you are picking and choosing choices that you know are going to be beneficial um because you also have to remember birds in the wild yeah someday they may get eaten and that while not really a choice is one of the options on the table for them <laughs> in the wild um that's not going to be an option for them in your home hopefully uh so you know creating that illusion of choice you know get, giving your birds the opportunity to pick different 
opportunities while still ensuring they are safe, um, that they are manageable. Um, that's going to be what we mean by choice. Absolutely. And, you know, so by offering those choices, you kind of have to know what choices <laughs> Frank's Frank says that his, the toy of choice is his fingers. And so you, you have offered that choice, Frank, you've made that decision. Um, I'm thinking it probably doesn't go with your goal, which in my opinion is the most important aspect of providing quality enrichment. Um, you want to have them, yes, they, they need to make choices, but you've got to have a goal and it, it's kind of a continuum that happens. So you offer these choices with a goal in mind. You know, it's not just, well, I threw 17 toys in there and yay. Yeah, no, that's not how this works. Um, yeah. There is such a thing as overstimulation and there's such a thing as not enough room to move around. So you don't just kind of put things in willy nilly. It's really about um, having choices that are headed towards a goal. Do you agree, Jack? Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think that goal is the most important aspect of providing enrichment and having it be meaningful enrichment. Um, I can't tell you how many times I have encountered people who, oh, well, here's this, this is the toy I got and we put it in the cage because I know I'm supposed to put toys in the cage. Um, mm -hmm. And so one, I most animal care professionals um, don't like the terms toys because it's very limited and it has a little bit of a connotation to it. Instead, we go with enrichment opportunities because that'll include all of your foraging toys, your puzzle feeders, manipulative toys, but then also you know visual enrichment, auditory enrichment. Uh, Robin and I have done sessions where we've completely broken down the idea of enrichment for you guys. So if you want a you know more in-depth focus on that, um, you can definitely go back and see one of those previous videos. But, um, you know, you need to understand why you're giving certain enrichment items. What is the what is your plan? Do you want the bird to destroy it? Do you want them to be mentally stimulated as they're figuring out a puzzle? Um, do you want them to make noise? Um, if you think about things that way and if you monitor that bird's interactions with those different types of enrichment, uh, I think you're going to have a much more successful and much more profitable uh, relationship building experience with your bird in that instance, because you're going to see what your bird is doing with those actual toys. Does it line up with what your plan was? Because sometimes it won't. Uh, sometimes you have a plan for a piece of enrichment and your bird says, no, this is what I'm doing with it instead. Um, <laughs> and that doesn't mean they're not enjoying it, but sometimes they don't play along with the plan. And, you know, that's going to be important, just watching them to see how they're interacting with that. It's, you know, that, that's so true that you kind of have to be flexible when it comes to that. And if you have a goal in mind and it doesn't work, okay, maybe you need to adapt that opportunity. Maybe you need to, you know, go, go. So we talked about regression last week and maybe you need to take a step back in what you're looking for, for a goal for this enrichment. And another thing that you can do with enrichment that's really cool is you can replace behaviors with enrichment interactions. So if you've got an animal or a bird that's plucking, if you keep him busy, it's kind of, the, the two activities are kind of contraindicated. You can't, you know, a bird can't be plucking if he's got something in his beak, or if he's, you know, using, if he's, he's biting at his feet, maybe, you know, he's got something going on with his feet and you've ruled out medical, you don't know what's going on, so if you give him foot toys to hold on to, or you give him, you know, different kinds of perching, there, there are so many ways to use enrichment to your benefit, but you've got to know what the goal is. You know, it's, it's again, enhancing the quality of life. So as long as you've got a goal, it's, it's time to move forward. And you've got that goal, you've got a plan, you know what you'd like to accomplish and what you'd like to accomplish for your bird. So the next step is, is I think, recording some of that. You know, Jack, we've talked about this, right? Yeah, we actually did an in-depth session on, you know, understanding how to record 
records for your animals. And we did medical records, but we also did understanding enrichment. How do you, you know, score your animal's interaction with it? How do you, you know, focus on it being safe? How do you focus on it being interactive? Um, so again, uh, you know, I, I feel like we're starting to say this more and more, but uh, every topic that comes up, any subtopic, it's almost like, and we did a video on that. Um, Cause <laughs> yeah, I, I think it is really, really important for people to be recording their enrichment. And you have so many different options there. Uh, first and foremost, uh, photos and video. Um, even if you have a bird that's interacting with a toy that you think it's really interesting, uh, even if you just take a video of that bird playing with that toy, put it on your Instagram page, put it on your Facebook, mm -hmm. it's there where you can watch it later. So you can assess if there are any changes in that animal's interaction with that enrichment. Uh, you help give other people ideas for enriching their animals. So even though it doesn't seem like it, that's a great way to record. Um, you can, of course, do the full you know, document that Robin and I showed you guys of how to score your enrichment, how to do things like that. Um, and if you don't want to go that fancy, if you just want to have a basic, you know, notebook, back to school supplies are incredibly cheap right now. You can get a basic notebook for, I think they have them at our grocery store for like 10 cents a piece. Mm -hmm. um, you know, write it down. That way you'll know when you gave your bird different things, how they interacted with them. Um, and it definitely helps you to just understand your bird a little bit better. I mean, Robin, what do you think? I, I definitely agree with you. And and you can see sometimes, oh, I might have to tweak that a little bit. I might need to change it up some. Or it gives you ways to, to look at it um, so that you can change it. You know, it was this way before. Melissa, I know Melissa does this, and I think it's great. She records what Zorro's cage setups looks like. And then she posts it in bird groups to give other people ideas. and that's that's super helpful. You know, we all think, oh, I'm not doing enough. Oh, I, everybody does this. But the thing is, maybe they're not, you know, it's, it's whatever I talk to bird groups and bird clubs, one of the things I like to say to people is bless you. No, I don't like to say, I do say bless you, but um, <laughs> is that if you, you've got something that's going on, that's really successful it may not be something that other people have thought of or the group that you're in, there might be a couple people who are struggling. You know, I know when we were doing the board and buster box parties, there were people, a couple of people that, that were like, I need instructions. I want to know exactly how to do it. And they, they said to me, I'm not creative when it comes to this kind of stuff. And, you know, we do know that it's not rocket surgery, but some people do, that's not and it gets messy too, that rocket surgery stuff. <laughs> We're, Nick's pulling out all the stops tonight. It's great. Um, but, you know, if we, if you give other people ideas, we really, I mean, we have worked so hard here on Friday Night Flock Talk to form this community. And I think we just need to reach out to the bigger community as well. You guys are, you guys get it. You're here, you're listening, you're learning. Pass that information on. Um, to, to your peers in, in the avicultural world. So, um, and this recording well, of enrichment course. is a great way. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, any of your friends that you have or anyone that you think could benefit from our ongoing discussions that we have on Fridays, please encourage them to come over here. You can go to the Leather Elves or the High Red Bird Facebook groups. Um, you know, there's there's always a ton of discussion there. We have the High Red Bird YouTube channel for you guys as well, which has all of our previous recordings, other things like that. So there are a wealth of resources out there. Uh, things like our Instagram pages for both the Leather Elves and High Red Bird. Nick is ready with everything, all the graphics. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep up. Um, but we one of creative you know, so many resources available for you guys. So, you know, definitely take advantage and one of, of the thing, One of the things I think it's really important while we're kind of talking about this is when you share information on Facebook, be careful that it's not, this is the best toy ever for Scarlet Macaws. Because it may be great for your Scarlet Macaw and it may work for some Scarlet Macaws, but not all. So just be careful that you don't make these super definitive statements when you're sharing stuff. Cause when you do that, people go, Oh yeah, no, she thinks she knows it all. I'm just, I'm not going to either even bother. So 
put your information out there, share it and let people kind of decide, oh, that might work for my bird. That might be great for this kind of bird. So, but again, that recording what you're doing is really, really great. Um, and I love seeing, you guys can send me enrichment videos anytime. I mean, I don't care if it's leather elves toys, if it's somebody else's toys, if it's not involving, <laughs> you know, any devices. I still would love to see your enrichment stuff. And you never know, you might get, you might end up in a presentation. Um, yeah. And it, Laura, it's, it's like saying all girls with blonde hair like this or that. It's true. It's even like saying all humans like something. We're all the same species as far as I know. Um, and then there's that scarlet that likes Frank's fingers. So, you know, I mean, you just, you kind of got to think about the individual. So you've got your goal, you're recording things. So what are you using for parts? I think that's the next the next question, the next place we need to go. Um, what are some good sources for toys and parts? Okay, I'm going to well, be I shameless mean, I, here. I know a pretty good. I was going to say, I, I, if I do it, it's not shameless because okay, it's not my company. Yeah, I was going to say I know of a of a pretty good uh, parrot toy manufacturer that has been in business for decades. Um, that my bird absolutely loves their toys, loves their parts. Um, I, I was going to show you guys that, yes, there are things that uh, are beyond loved at this point. Uh, this this was a beautiful toy at one point. Um, although now, seeing that it has been very much interacted with, uh, about halfway destroyed, um, I think I would say it's still a beautiful toy because obviously a bird got hours of enjoyment out of this toy so uh and that's going to be the leather elves and uh robin told you guys earlier that they have their bogo sale continuing until tomorrow so if you need to get more toys or more parts um you could obviously take a look there in the next uh let's see about 30 hours um you have that mm -hmm. much time available to get those orders in um and definitely take it don't leave right but now I mean, though yeah, that, no. that bird just flew off to, to order, oh. but you guys stay. We'll, we'll, he'll take care of it. Um, but so as far as parts are concerned, I think there are a lot of places that sell parts, a lot of great um, stores out there that, you know, online and in person. I know there are a bunch of bird stores that have sections just devoted to parts. You know, it's you can walk in and just pick out of bins and find different parts which is kind of fun because then you can pick and choose, you know, I only want one of these, I want three of these, whatever. Um, and, and kind of have some ideas in mind when you go to do that. But there are lots of different options out there, but there are certain things I think you should always have in your enrichment cabinet. And I'm Jack, I'm sure you have a list, you know, as well. That, that things that, you know, when you, okay, I'm, I'm kind of stuck. I need to do something. I want to do something quick. And so for me, some of those things are coffee filters, you know, the unbleached co or the, just the white coffee filters, um, condiment cups like these, the little, these are, this is, um, it's a recycled corn product. It's just like paper and it, it's compostable. It'll disintegrate. It's not, it's perfectly safe for your bird. These are great for foraging. Um, leather strips, just having, absolutely, Eva, we're going to talk about doing some recycling in a little bit. Um, the finger traps. These are, I mean, they're cheap enough. Don't get stuck. It's bad if you don't know how to use them. Um, I learned from Jack, this was like, you know, you know how on Facebook it says, how many, how old were you when you figured this out? Um, yeah, I was this today old. But if you squish them together, the hole gets bigger and then you can fit stuff in there. Um, but these are great for, these are quick and easy. You throw something in there, you throw it in the cage. It's great. Um, crinkle paper. Who doesn't love crinkle paper? I Right? You got to have crinkle paper always. Um, vine balls. If you find a sale on vine balls, go for it. A lot of the natural products right now are very difficult to get um, just because they're not coming in. So, and then boxes. I think boxes are super important. What do you think, Jack? Well, what kind of things do you like to have on hand? 
So first and foremost, I feel like we need to include this message. Uh, you have to make sure that you're checking on the safety of the items for your parrot toys, for your toy parts. Um, I think it's really important to recognize. So things like vine balls, um, obviously they can be made for different reasons with different purposes. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there, there are places by me that do floristry that have painted vine balls. Um, and I would not feel comfortable utilizing something like that for my bird. Um, but use your best judgment. Um, I think that's going to be, you know, your, your best friend in picking out your toy parts and things like that. Um, and again, that's one of the really, really good things about finding a reputable parrot toy part seller. Um, like, so a lot of the things that you've shown, I actually did a video on parrot toy parts that you can find at the dollar store. Um, cause a lot of those things you can get there, coffee filters, uh, cupcake paper, cupcake liners, um, things like that. Mm -hmm. But if you have a parrot toy seller that will sell you individual parts, um, especially if they're the parts that they use on their own toys, you'll know that that research was already done to make sure that they are safe, that they are, uh, you know, capable of going in with your bird. Um, so that's definitely a peace of mind I recommend for people, especially if you're new to making toys. Set yourself up for success. Um, Honestly, for me, one of the most important things for building enrichment, for reusing enrichment, Enrich, uh, Eva pointed out she likes to recycle toy parts. Mm -hmm. um, so here, I'll show you guys right now. This, this one right here, this toy that Widget completely destroyed. You know what? These pods are probably a little bit tight. I mean, that one's, uh, that could be a house for a small insect or something. Um, <laughs> like I just set up a little terrarium and put it out there. And, you know, yeah, it's got a wonderful little home. But uh, you guys will notice that these, so these birch rounds are, you know, they're looking great. They're not chewed up or anything. Um, so one thing I would do is I would take this toy apart, take the pieces that I know are going to be useful. And uh, my favorite thing for animal care is a nylon bristle brush. Um, I am going to use a little bit of soap and water. I can go ahead and clean these. Um, you definitely want to try to remove any droppings, anything like that, um, when you're recycling those toy parts. Um, so again, nylon bristle brush is one of my most important tools that you can have for recycling enrichment. And I do recommend you guys, if you use a nylon bristle brush for things like your dishes, get a separate one for cleaning yeah. your parrot toy parts. Um, it's a it's a health issue. It's also a, if you live with someone else and they find out that you are using the, uh, that you are using the dish brush to clean bird poop off of things, yeah, you're going to have a discussion about that. I can almost guarantee that. Um, but, um, you know. Um, that sounds like personal experience to me. I'm just saying. I do not know what you are talking about, and we are moving forward. <laughs> so, I one thing I wanted. So, a couple of things with the vine balls and any of those things. I know Kim mentioned that you know there's coating and chemicals on the ones used at the florist and things like that. And she's absolutely right. My rule of thumb when I'm if I'm going to buy something that's not from a bird, um, you know, a bird specialty store or an online bird shop. One of the things I always look for is, is it shiny? Because unless it's metal, unless you're talking about, you know, chain or, or something like that, if it's shiny, there's a good chance it's got a varnish on it or a paint. The vine, you know, like the grapevine wreaths, those are a great base for toys. But if they're all shiny, there's a good chance they've been treated with something. Same with the vine balls. I can tell you those pods, Jack, that are on that skewer, those are next to impossible to find right now in captivity in the United States. Um, they do come in from overseas and they are not here. Um, if anybody you know knows of any of those, absolutely let me know where you found them because I would love to know. My A lot of our toys have them on them and I am at the bottom of the bin. So yes, it would not be a good idea to use a significant other's toothbrush. No, unless you're in a big fight, Kim, and then that's possible. Um, I'm just saying. Um, it's Jack the ultimate and Robin revenge. Are not 
Jack is not endorsing that post. You can come to Robin for that later on. Jack is not supporting <laughs> that. Use your words. That's a different. That's a different Friday night discussion that we can have later <laughs> on. Can okay, well, you know, just message me on Facebook. But um, and I can say that because my significant other's out of town, so he won't know unless he's watching. You know, and he said he was going to watch, so we'll see. Um, and you know, it's so. But the the. In, Lori brought up a good point too. She said, smell it. And if it smells like oil or some chemical, you probably don't want to use it. Um, the, it's, it's, the other thing is if it's a small manufacturer, I mean, I'll speak for myself, but I know that a lot of small toy builders will sell you parts. You know, they may not, we have some parts on our website, but you know, if somebody calls me and says, I can't find finger traps or I can't find X, if I have surplus, I'll sell them to you. And a lot of manufacturers, you know, you might want to give that a shot. <laughs> okay, so he is listening and the toothbrush is with him. <laughs> well, that's good. Honey. I'm glad you brought it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It, we are going down the drain this evening. Um, so, uh, you know, it's just that safety factor. You know, we get into like having a lot of fun with creating it's always safety first. Um, yeah, absolutely. Frank, when in doubt, throw it out. If you, I mean, I, my other kind of rule of thumb is that if you are watching something or listening to something, or you're reading something on Facebook and it just doesn't feel right to you, or you think it wouldn't work with your birds, you don't have to do it. It's, it's your bird hasn't died to this point, not having it. Okay. You know, so if you decided that this cup just wasn't safe for your birds and don't go, oh, well, Robin said, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to do this because if it's not going to work for your bird, it's not going to work for your bird and just be done with it. Or if, you know, we say the vine ball's great, but you had a bird that got stuck in a vine ball before, then you don't want to use them again. So yeah. it's, it's really that, again, it's almost that study of one or your flock, you know what they can and can't do. So, um, Jack, any other safety tips? Yeah. I mean, I, th I think honestly, Robin and I have encouraged you guys before when you're thinking about the safety of any enrichment you give your bird, play the game of what is the worst case scenario? What is, what is the worst way that your bird could interact with something? Could they potentially get caught in it? Could they potentially chew something up and ingest it? Because even if they haven't in the past, doesn't mean that that's not going to happen now. Um, so by being prepared for every eventuality, um, I know that can seem like it's asking for a lot at times and it can, uh, it, it can drive you a little bit crazy. Um, and you're never going to be prepared for every eventuality, but by doing your best to think about all the different ways that you can provide safe enrichment in a variety of ways, you're going to be setting yourself up for success. So Brooke is asking a question and Brooke, welcome. I, I haven't seen you on before and I'm so excited you're here and we both are, but there's, there's a rule here at Flock Talk. There's no such thing as a foolish question because we're all learning all the time. But to answer your question, vine balls are not made out of grapevine, um, but it is okay to make your own with grapevine. In fact, if you've got fresh grapevine that you know hasn't been treated with anything, it's like bonus time. Um, you can make, and if you form it while it's still um, fresh, like if you pick it and form it, it's awesome. Um, to, you can make different shapes. You can wrap it around, um, you know, take a piece of PVC or a perch and wrap it around there. And then you just slide it right off and you've got a spiral. Grapevine is a wonderful, wonderful enrichment tool, but just make sure it's somewhere that it wasn't treated with any kind of chemical. So, right. And I mean, the great, the great thing about most grapevine is that, uh, every part of it is going to be safe. So even if it have things like the leaves, um, you know, birds can still interact with that. Um, you know, we, we, we have wild grapevine that grows down here, um, which is 
incredible when you can get it. But again, the big concern there is making sure that it doesn't come from an area that has been treated with herbicides, pesticides, anything that would leave some residual toxicity to your birds. Um, again, we want to make sure that we're being as safe as possible. There's a lot going on in the chat about safety. And I think, you know, in the comments, and I think that's really important. A lot of people are saying you've got to supervise, be safe, be observant, um, supervise your birds with anything new, uh, make sure you're checking it out and making sure that not only is it clean, but that it still remains safe. You know, some stuff, it goes into the cage and it's safe at that point. But once your bird has at it and, you know, plays with it and shreds it or whatever, it may not be safe any longer. So that's on you. That's your responsibility to really, you know, maintain and make sure that you're not leaving stuff. What do you got there, Jack? I can tell by the smile on your face. So I can actually showcase uh, that exact idea. So here we have another. Um, you, you can see this one is not as well loved um, because it just didn't have as widget didn't have this toy as long. That other one was most definitely what I would say is his favorite. Um, but so this right here is a great foraging opportunity. You see, there's the cups with the little lids, um, and we know what widget is capable of doing to those pods. He completely shreds them and destroys them. So what I would expect to happen with this toy right here is as it is being used, and I'm just throwing toy parts on the ground because um, that, that's how this works, right? You just throw things Because it's the, mag um, the magic of cinema. Go ahead. Now, as and the pods destroyed, uh, what happens is the bigger, harder wood pieces would be left. The pods are then gone. So then I am left with something that looks like this. Um, so I would say this toy, while it was safe, this would be concerning to me right now because this, you basically created a long chain with a weight on the end of it. So if your bird is playing with this, it would be really easy to get this wrapped around their neck, anything like that. So again, when Robin and I tell you that you need to be constantly observing your toys, even if it started off safe, that doesn't mean it's going to stay safe. So it's it's up to you guys to make sure that you're checking on those things on a regular basis. Um, and something like this, you know, even if I wanted the bird to have that piece right there, um, I could fill this up with more pieces so that it wouldn't be an issue. I could adjust the quick link so that it then is down here. I could, that shortens up that chain and then that gives me this section of chain that I could put even more. Maybe I want to fringe knot leather through those links or anything like that. I mean, there's a, there's a ton of options, um, but you just need to make sure you're focusing on that safety. So you mentioned quick links, Jack, and um, I'll be perfectly honest. The pear shaped ones are not my favorite. Um, if your bird doesn't mess with them, it's okay. But I like this style quick link. If you guys can see that. Um, and there are two different kinds of these. One of these is kind of spring loaded. And those are definitely not a favorite of mine because what happens sometimes is the spring, you know, the bird pushes down, the spring pops back and now you've got, you know, a quick link stuck on a mandible. And it's really something that, you know, you want to consider and please, please, please don't throw them away. I had somebody who I really respect in the bird community. She's been doing it like forever. And she was getting some, a new toy out and it didn't have a quick link. And she's like, Oh, I don't have a quick link. And I'm like, I'm like you've been doing this for like 30 years. You don't have a quick link. And pe some people go, Oh, the toy's done. And they just throw it away. Um, please save your quick links. The, if you're going to put them outside, you want stainless steel. Well, stain you can use either, but stainless steel is better. Um, but as long as they're intact, you want to keep them and reuse them. Right. Um, and I would say, so you can find quick links, even at the hardware store. Um, you're probably not going to have the option. Most bird toy makers will utilize either a stainless steel or a nickel plated quick link. Both of those are going to be safe for your birds. Um, the primary difference being the nickel plate 
if your toy comes with like heavy duty stainless steel links, you'll probably notice a slight increase in price for those because those are not cheap. But that's why Robin and I tell you, please save them and recycle them because mm -hmm. uh, a heavy duty stainless steel quick link can last you years. Um, but there's so many different ways that you can attach different toys to different things. Make sure you're thinking about that safety aspect. Make sure you're thinking about, does this, you know, does it have a spring? Does it close in on itself? Is there the potential for my bird to get caught? Um, and as long as you're avoiding things like that, things that are those obvious safety concerns, uh, you mm -hmm. may realize that, yes, you know, there are some types of quick links that I can use with some birds, not with others. Um, Mika, the umbrella cockatoo that I've shown you guys with a scissor beak, um, he can very rarely get any type of metal quick link because even though he has a scissor beak, he has the surgical precision to completely destroy them. Um, but if we use, uh, plastic rings, uh, we, the, we'll use the plastic rings that come for baby toys, uh, those locking mm -hmm. plastic rings. Um, those work great for him and he can't destroy it. Again, it is that study of one. You need to figure out what works for your individual birds. And I'll tell you guys right now, if you have more than one bird, chances are good. You could end up in a situation where, okay, this bird over here can only get this type of, of quick link and he has these concerns with toys. And this bird has a completely different set of criteria when it comes to enrichment. Um, so just being aware of that is going to help set you up for success. And I know Lori posted, never throw away hardware. It's true. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a chain. Once things get chewed off it, you just check it, make sure it's still, you know, all covered. It's still, if it's a plate, if it's a nickel plate, that it's still all intact. If it's stainless, just make sure that there's no, you know, broken pieces or edges. S hooks, S hooks can be opened and can you see that? S hooks can be opened and used again. Um, just make sure that when you close them back up that they are tight too so that they're not getting your birds not getting like their beak or their their nails stuck in the the s hook and with o rings make sure they're welded closed um it's you know it's a lot easier to work with an open o ring a non welded o ring but there's always that bird that can open the the o ring itself and again get stuck and like anybody who has ever had anything get stuck on their bird's mandible, it's not a good time. It's, it's definitely not. And the same with safety. You know, if you've got a bird that's caught in rope or caught in a long uh, length of chain, removing that bird from that is ridiculously stressful for you and the bird. So just be careful with the stuff that you're saving. Um, just make sure it's still in really good shape. Now, so. one of the things you can do when you're saving things, when you're thinking about things, if you go out to buy new toys, one of my favorite things to do is to take a look at how the toys are built to see, are there things that I can use later on? So uh, that toy we just showed you guys, if it went potentially unsafe, I'm going to be left with something like this. It's this piece of chain. Uh, we've got a heavy duty O-ring. Uh, we've got those leather strips, which I'd say those are still in good condition. But if they weren't, I could obviously cut them off. I can use this as a toy hanger once the bird is completely done with it or once you have thrown all the toy parts onto the ground to be part of a demonstration video because I'm sure that's a thing that happens for you guys as well. Um, if you have toys that can come on uh, stainless steel skewers, uh, you know, these birds say skewers, you're going to see them in a, oh, you have one too. Um, I wonder where you got that. Um, probably the same place I got it which would have yes, been you. Maybe. Um, no, they, they come in so many different sizes, shapes. You can find one that works for your bird. Um, you can find littler ones. You can find, uh, I have some that are about two feet long, heavy duty built for macaws and cockatoos. Um, you can get these spiral, these spiral ones are really cool, um, which it actually likes to sit on it and pick at the pieces. Um, but you can get the straight skewers as well. Um, but skewers, honestly, if you do not have one of these in your toy building arsenal, fix that. Um, this mm -hmm. is going, th if you're new to building parrot toys, I would say these are your training wheels. 
this is the easiest way in the world to build a brand new toy. Yeah, it's, I mean, skewers are like a no brainer, honestly, because you just, you know, you throw some, you got wood that has holes in it, throw it on there. You've got a vine ball, throw it on there. You've got a condiment cup, throw it on there. You can even thread a finger trap on there if that made you happy. Um, whatever you want to do, stick it through the middle of a small box. If you've got, you know, little boxes or like jewelry boxes, gift boxes, you can skewer that. Almost anything can go on a skewer. And it's, you can use it to do food. You, it's a toy base. It's a food, you know, it's a feeder. There's so much that can be done and they're easily cleaned too. You know, that's something that, that Jack mentioned with the brush, but you want things that you can sanitize easily. Look, look at that clean. Look at how simple that is. I mean, and, there's, and there's not soap that. and water right now, so y'all can do better <laughs> than I'm doing right now. Soap and water would help, but this, this is how that would generally work. There you go. <laughs> and, you know, it, you can throw these in the dishwasher. Um, again, you know, you got to depend who you live with and if they're okay with that or not. Um, but you can throw them in the dishwasher. Maybe you take them to, you know, where you work and you put them in the lunchroom dishwasher. Don't tell your boss I said that. Um, you do have to change them out sooner. Absolutely, Lori, if you put food items on them. You want to put them, when you put a food item on, you want, you. it's a very short window that you leave it in because um, you'll get bacteria on there and that's not a good situation. So if you're putting food on here, it goes in and it comes out. Um, if it's wood or something like that, it's fine. You absolutely, Kim. So they can forage with the with the toys. I love putting things that are forageable. Forageable. It's a new word. Forageable on a skewer because then it's got this. You know, the other thing about skewers is, you know, Kim brings up you can have them forage with the toys. You can drill holes in regular toys, but with a skewer, there's a lot of movement to it. So, you know, it's not super easy. It's not, I stand on my perch, I reach up to here, I got my treat. No, they've got to hang maybe. You hang this in the center of your cage. So there's a lot that can be done um, with, with the skewers. Um, Jack, are you working on something there? I was going to say, yeah. So the really fun thing about the skewers is, again, we told you guys, they can be put together incredibly quickly. Um, so yeah. yeah, I know most of you probably don't have parrot toy parts just sitting on your floor around <laughs> you because somebody I bet they do. It, broke apart toys right around you, um, but they can go together really easily. Um, one thing I do want to point out, um, so when you mentioned using food, um, and those considerations you want to make, just remember that not all food on a skewer or on a toy is going to be created equal. Um, obviously if you have things that are dried out, um, you know, you have a little bit more time that those can be with your animals. If you have things like, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I would do something like this and maybe put, uh, like a seed or a nut in each of those cups. That would give me a lot more time than if I took a skewer and put a slice of fresh papaya on there. Um, obviously that's mm -hmm. going to be a little bit different. Um, you want to make sure that you're thinking about things like bacterial growth, fungal growth, but also uh, any pests, uh, things like ants, flies, uh, depending on where you are and where your birds are, if rodents are a concern. That's definitely something you have to keep in mind. Um, and again, it all comes back to the observing those things, making sure they're staying safe, making sure your animal's environment is staying safe. So Bev just asked, how would you hang lettuce leaves on a cage? Bev zip ties are, you can do the whole bunch. Um, I like to use, you know, like romaine or, you know, kale is not lettuce, but it's a leafy green and you just zip tie it onto the side. And then you can either wet them down um, and have some leaf bathing happen, which we've discussed in the past where the bird will rub up against the wet leaves um, or they will eat them. Um, it's, you know, it could be either way. Uh, Terry mentioned binder clips might be a way to do it. So there's a lot of different um, options and it's that, it's that wander through the hardware store. You know, I, people in my town think I'm kind of weird and it's not just because I'm weird. It's because walking up and down the aisles of the hardware store, 
and looking at different things and looking at everything. Is it, you know, made out of a safe material? Is it something that the birds aren't going to go through? But you get some wonderful inspiration just looking at parts, I think. Yeah. One of, one of my favorite things for doing greens, for doing uh, any type of brows, uh, I will use the PVC Y fittings. So that's going to be, uh, it basically looks like a coupling. Then it has a piece that comes off at a 45 degree angle. So I can secure that to the side of my bird's enclosure. And that gives me the option to hang something straight up. I just shove it in the fitting or out at a 45 degree angle. Um, so that gives mm -hmm. me a couple options there. And I know that's going to be an easy way to include those things in my bird's environment. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. And, you know, Adrian mentioned um, you can... <clears throat> You can also just put them on, put like the heavy base of the, of the uh, leaf lettuce on the skewer. So like baby bok choy, you can put on skewers and they have a real thick base. So um, that's just, you know, an option. It's a, it's a good idea. Thank you, Adrian. So the, I'm sorry, I'm looking at some of the comments and I'm being drawn that way. So big stainless steel <laughs> bowl of lettuce. To, then it becomes a foraging, like a leaf litter foraging option. And you can put other things in there. So not only are they getting the lettuce, but they're getting other things. Good point, Kim, making sure that the binder clips, that the material doesn't chip off. Um, you want to make sure anything that you're using um, is, is, again, bird safe. And I think uh, Terry probably has, if maybe Terry can share in the comments, if there's a specific brand that you use or that you found. Um, cause I know I trust Terry with, with my, with my bird's life. Cause she's, uh, she's an amazing, amazing caregiver. So, um, what other kinds of things, Jack, um, we talk about, you know, we've talked about the tangible kind of things we can use. There are other things that you kind of have to have in your arsenal if you're working on creating enrichment. So earlier when I talked about the idea of enrichment versus toys, um, the idea of providing that mental, that physical stimulation, for me, one of the most important things that I can utilize is going to be uh, like a tabletop uh, bird stand or uh, a bird play gym that's going to be in a different room. Because that's going to give me the opportunity to enrich my birds by moving them to different places where they can see different things. They can interact with different things. They can hear different things. Um, and please do not discredit visual enrichment or auditory enrichment because it's not something that your animal is, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, well, they're not chewing on and destroying something. It's not as engaging a behavior. Um, I have, uh, where I work, I have a 50 plus year old uh, wild caught uh, umbrella cockatoo female um, who she does not have the same understanding of enrichment is a lot of the newer birds that I work with because she is, uh, she, she is not a newer bird. She is a, she, she is an older bird. Um, she is set in her ways. She has decided that a lot of things she doesn't really want to interact with, but one of her favorite things to do, um, she is right next to my walk through feeding aviary. She will sit on a perch and watch the small birds. Um, and it's mm -hmm. a lot of fun for me to watch her because I can see that she is very clearly watching them. Like you see the head turn to the side, giving her that full focus. Like she's following the birds as they're going down to the ground, flying up in the trees. So visual enrichment on things like that. Uh, widget, uh, I have my balcony. I have screened off, um, so it creates a good safe spot for him. Um, it works for me because I work in a, or I live in a semi-tropical climate. Um, Robin, you'd probably have a few more challenges with that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just a few. Um, Widget loves to watch squirrels. So uh, there's actually an oak tree about 30 feet away, and he will watch squirrels running through the tree. Visual enrichment, auditory enrichment, um, giving your bird the opportunity to interact with new things, so important, so easy. So have mm -hmm. those spaces in your home. I mean, what do you think, Robin? I absolutely agree. And I was going to say, too, I think sometimes you are the enrichment. You know, it's that visual piece. They're they're kind of checking out what's going on. What are they doing? Um, and, you know, I was I was talking to Irwin and Marilyn, who are on tonight, and we were talking about um, 
how their bird definitely likes the callback, that that auditory um, whistle and whistle back. And those are things that you have with you all the time. And they're part of that essential enrichment. It's not just the tangibles. It's the visual. It's the auditory. It's, you know, it's all those things that you can have on hand that you have with you all the time that really um, are easy to do. And it doesn't take a whole lot of effort. So, um, yeah, butterflies, watching butterflies. Um, it's, it's definitely, you know, there's, there's so much going on out there for our birds to see and we get butterflies every Friday night. So, and I mean, and I there's, love watching those wild Carolina angles. <laughs> <laughs> there was a she she corrected herself. That. It was a tight Carolina knolls. Those Carolina angles are pretty cool too, though. They're they're rare. Adrian just has them on her property, but you know maybe she'll let you guys come visit at some point so you can see them. Um, the, the ones so, we have around here, they're adorable. Um, some would even say they're acute. Oh, oh! I'm sorry, you guys. Wow. That kind of Thank you, Nick. Do not encourage that behavior, Nick. Jeez. Okay. So, so we've covered a lot tonight. Um, and we we didn't get all the way through um, exactly what we wanted to talk about. But I think you guys have, you know, hopefully have some new ideas as to what you can try, what to keep, what to always have on hand. And, you know, there are, we've discussed it before. There are those days when you go, oh, I can't do one more thing. I can't, I just, I can't. I'm tired. I worked really hard today or whatever. Um, if you've got these simple things, the coffee filter, throw a Nutriberry in a coffee filter, wrap it up and toss it in. And what you want, you, you've done something that your bird's going to love. And it wasn't a lot of effort. The, there you go. The dollar store, you know, toy parts. All of that can be done with stuff from the dollar store. And we've given you those words of caution as far as what to look for. And again, if something makes you the least bit uncomfortable, don't do it. it it's not yeah. worth it. Um, so final thoughts, Jack. Um, on yeah, I, I would say, honestly, all, all of the things we had talked about are really important. Um, again, if you have those days where you, you know, you're going to be super busy, um, you know, being prepared for that, um, for, for me, one of the most frustrating things that I can see is when people say that, oh, well, I don't know if I can have a bird because I don't have this set amount of time that I can dedicate every single day to my bird. Um, I, one, I, there are so many ways that you can work around your schedule, work around your way, work around the things that your bird needs, um, setting yourself up for success by pre-making toys or purchasing toys. Um, honestly, for me, one of the best things to do on a day that I am not, uh, if I'm not having a good day, if I don't have the energy to put together those enrichment opportunities, uh, that is where I go to the bin of brand new toys that my bird hasn't even gotten yet. I hang that up. Um, one, that enrichment is done incredibly quickly, so I feel better about my day. But two, um, you know, typically I then get to see, you know, a, you know, jackpot reaction for my animal because it's not like, it's not, oh, you gave me a little thing to interact with. And that it's, I get them, I get all the enrichment, um, which helps me to turn my day around too. So um, for, for me, one of the most important things is Working these things out, we wanted to talk about things to include in your enrichment arsenal, things that keep you prepared, because all of this ultimately makes the keeping of birds easier and more enjoyable. And I think that's why we're all here. We want to find ways to really enjoy our birds. Um, so that th this topic was pretty important to us. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, obviously enrichment is is my passion and it's providing that that enhanced quality of life 
And I think sharing with you guys and then you guys sharing with one another. And I know Melissa Davis has a DIY page on Facebook and share your stuff on, on Melissa's page. There's great, you know, some great ideas. There are some ideas, not just on that, not on that page, but on some pages that you look at and you go, ah, oh, that might not work. And so you just want to, you know, Lori's right. Let your birds help you make the toys, build that relationship. Enrichment to me is really about observation. It kind of hones your observation skills. So you see what they like and what they don't like, what they interact with, what, you know, is their kind of favorite activity? What kind of preferences do they have? And that's really what it's about. You know, it's about knowing, getting to know them and really um, enhancing their lives because you understand what they like and what they don't like. So I, enrichment to me is, is not an option. It's not a, you know, well, I'll skip that. I won't do it. You know, when I used to work with a lot of zoos, one of the things I always talked to, to curators about was you can have people, you know, doing medicating, cleaning, feeding, interacting with the, the guests and things like that. But one of the really crucial things you've got to have them do is create enrichment that's effective. Uh, you know, create that plan, create that system and go from there. So I just think enrichment is it's just another thing on the checklist, but it's a really fun thing on the checklist. So, um, OK, we have a trivia question and. Let's see. So the tri are you ready? I think, you know, the answer, Jack. Uh, <laughs> now I do. Oh, now do what is the most important aspect of providing quality enrichment? So if you guys have paid attention, um, every night, every Friday night, we give you the answer more than once to the trivia question. <laughs> and so we'll see if you really pay attention. Um, and we're going to, again, well, we're deferring to, yes. I, I think it's important on this one because there's probably people that have different ideas. Um, but so I guess according to Jack and Robin, um, what is going to be mo the most important aspect of providing quality enrichment? Okay. <laughs> um, oh, so so is that Nick making that decision? Nick, really, we got to <laughs> do something. <laughs> the nose, buddy. I don't know. Uh oh, he's making decisions. We don't. It doesn't look like we have an answer yet. Weighing the answers. I don't yeah, know. So There's a lot of different things. Would like a little hint. Um, we talk about when you give enrichment, um, you know, what I'm trying to figure out how to give a hint without giving the full answer. Uh <laughs> well, how about, how about this is at the beginning of the process. How's that? Yes. Before um, and it's interesting. The and there you go. I'll give a hint of soccer. Soccer. Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's a good clue. And Nick, Nick just That's wanted to use that clue again. <laughs> oh, oh, I think we might have a winner. <laughs> the thing is, I love reading your answers because all of your answers are fantastic. And it's really yeah. exciting for me to see the different ideas that you all have and how you how you look at this. But Lori got the answer right, um, that you've got to have goals. So Lori, because I know that you have goals, this week's con this week's prize for trivia was an enrichment consult with Jack and I. Um, and you can probably teach us a thing or two because Lori, I know you do a great job, but um, we can, you know, we will talk to you afterwards. We can figure out a good time or we could all just sit around and, and have this consult at AFA because I know that Lori is going to be in Bloomington for the AFA conference. Um, so... Well I, I think it's important to point out, we did get a lot of answers there. 
And all of the mm-hmm. answers we got were good answers. They were all things to think about. You know, we were looking at safety, interaction, all of that. Um, but again, having that goal in mind, I think, is a component that is so important before you even get that piece of enrichment, before you build it, before you purchase it at a store, knowing what you're trying to accomplish there. Um, but no, I mean, they, you guys had all wonderful answers. It, they definitely were. So if you if you're listening, like try to go through some of those and take a look at them and see how you can apply those, because a lot of them are really good um you know, Kim, safety is always important. Offering choices, you know, all of these things are important. We just kind of wanted to drive home that you've got to have that goal in the beginning. So, all right, a lot to take in and a lot, but tonight was a lot of fun for us. I, I hope you guys had fun too. And uh, we will be back next week at 7 p.m. Eastern time on the Leather Elves Facebook page. And if you haven't, um, you know, subscribe, or if you don't follow the leather elves, um, do so. Cause then you'll get that notification. Um, and cause we don't want you to be late. You can be, if you, it's fine, but, uh, you know, we, we don't want you to miss out. And, and if you, I, you guys have so much to offer and your comments really, you know, help keep this going and help keep Jack and I, um, wanting to do more. So we want to thank you. And next week, We've got an interesting topic. It's making the most of a conference. So a lot of online conferences these days, some in person, who knows with the way the world's going, if that's going to stay that way. So we really want to you know, talk to you guys about how to get the most um, out of going to a conference or attending a conference. So Jack, any, anything else you'd like to, to share tonight? You know, again, I do just want to say thank you guys all so much for tuning in every single Friday, being a part of these conversations. Uh, I think it's so important to get so many different points of view from so many different people. Uh, I I think it's important for people to see, uh, like for tonight, for example, different types of enrichment, what works for some people, what doesn't work for other people. Um, It's definitely that important study of one. Again, just make sure that any of those decisions you are making, you are making with your birds in mind, you are observing them, you are making sure that you are providing for that safety and that well-being. Um, But I know you guys are going to be doing that because you guys tune in every single Friday or you watch these videos when they come out later. You are so interested in learning more for your birds, providing the best opportunities and the best welfare for your birds. And The idea that Robin and I can be a part of that, of bettering the life of your animals, really does mean quite a bit to me. So thank you so much for letting us be a part of that, Um, for welcoming us into your homes. uh, It it really does mean a lot to us. It does. And you've got two more weeks before that AFA conference. We've got tomorrow night at midnight to order um, BOGO. And... uh, there's a lot, you know, a lot of deadlines coming up, but you do have those two weeks um, before the AFA conference. If you'd like to register, you can register virtually or you can go in person. Um, I highly suggest in person because I know there'll be cookie butter. Just saying. Um, so we will see you guys next week here online um, for the, the the making the most of a conference. And if you would love to win this quilt, which I'm sure a lot of you would, um, you can go to the, the um, use the QR code or go to that the address at the bottom and uh, purchase some of those raffle tickets. It goes to a great, great cause. Um, and we will see you guys next week. So you all take care. Have a great week and be safe. Bye-bye.